Hi everybody, it's Susan Rashawn, The Techie Mentor. Thank you for stepping by my YouTube channel and continuing to learn about pricing your services. So this is video three in a series of videos all about setting your rates or pricing your services, whatever you wanna call it. And in the first video, we just did some terminology, talked about packages and retainers and billable hours. Second video, we actually looked at how to determine how much you need to earn in your VA business versus how much you want to earn. And in this video, we're gonna talk about mistakes to avoid. And there are lots of them, <laughs> and I've made all of them. Um, first off, if you haven't done the exercise in video two, I encourage you to do that first because that's really gonna give you a number um, that you need to charge hourly. So realize that the spreadsheet that I'm using in that video, you can get um, by clicking on the link in video number two in the description, there's a place that you can go to download that so you can use it for yourself. But also realize that when you're doing this spreadsheet, it's all about billable hours. So we're not talking packages, we're just talking about uh, billable hours. And so that will give you kind of an idea of maybe your starting point, how much you have to make at a minimum, right? And then you can make the decision on if you want to earn more or you just want to start there. A lot of pricing has to do with how you value yourself. So um, mistakes to avoid, um, and maybe this really isn't a mistake, but maybe this is something that you need to confront. If you have um, mindset issues or fears around money, you're going to need to confront those because those are going to hold you back in your business. I know a lot of people teach, you know, how to be a VA and all this other stuff, which is all fine and dandy because I do that too. But one of the things that you really need to understand is that your mindset can either leapfrog you forward or hold you back. And if you have issues around money, which I had tons of issues around money, still do, still working through them. Um, you know, I kept hitting ceilings or, you know, I kept kind of self-sabotaging my success because of these fears around money. And so if you find yourself in that boat, you know, that's another conversation, but I want you to understand that that could be what's holding you back is some self-limiting beliefs about money. One of the best books I ever read uh, is by Denise Duffield Thomas, and it's called, and this is the name of the book, so please don't be <laughs> offended, uh, Get Rich, You Lucky Bitch. You can get it on Amazon. I highly recommend it. Um, and doing the exercises in that book will make a very big difference if you have money issues. So that's one of the things that you're going to have to confront if you have um, you know, self-limiting beliefs about your value right? Because how you price yourself has to, has to do with how you value your services. And if you don't really value your services, then you're going to have a tendency to underprice, which means you're going to struggle. And who wants to struggle, right? You probably left the cube farm or trying to escape the cube farm because you want to have freedom. And that means freedom from struggle as well. So that would be number one. And, and so here's some more mistakes um, I would say that you want to avoid. Haggling with yourself, <laughs> Right, haggling with yourself over what you're going to price your services. If you've done the exercises in video two, then you know what your starting number is, whether it's $25 an hour or $55 an hour. That's the number that you need to start with in order to make what you need to earn to keep the lights on or to have the lifestyle that you're currently accustomed to. Now, you may have a bigger number, which you should for your goal, but first off, don't haggle with yourself. Start with the number that you got out of the exercise in video number two. Two is don't shop with other people's wallets. Don't worry if one, you can afford your own services. And two, don't worry about if clients can afford your services. Pricing also attracts clients, right? So what you price at also attracts those types of clients. For instance, uh, my best analogy is the car industry, right? With the car industry, you have economy, middle class, and luxury, right? Economy cars are less expensive than middle class cars. Middle class cars are less expensive than luxury cars. But you know what, my friends? Every single one of those has clients. There are people who want economy, people who want middle of the road, and people who want luxury. Your pricing can fall into any one of those three um, buckets, if you will. It's all up to you. Do you want to be a luxury brand, middle of the road, or economy? There's no wrong answer, but you have to decide where you want to be. Okay? So, don't haggle with yourself. Don't shop with other people's wallets. Don't shop with your own wallet, which means if you can't afford your own services, don't worry about it. And don't worry if clients can afford you or not, because there are clients that can afford you. There are business coaches that charge $100 an hour, and there are business coaches that charge $50,000 an hour. And you know what? They both have clients. So if you're currently charging $25 an hour, and you realize that you really should be charging $45 an hour, guess what, my friends? You're going to have to find a new lake to fish in 
or a new pond deficient because you can't go back to where you were getting $25 an hour clients and expect to get $45 an hour clients. A lot of mistakes people make is, you know, they raise their rates and they don't get any new clients at that rate. Well, that's because they're shopping in the same place for those clients. You have to go somewhere else. If you want something different than you have, you have to do something different. So you can't go back to that same pond and keep fishing for clients that you want to pay you more money. You have to find a new lake, right? So don't lower your rates because you're not getting the clients. You're just looking in the wrong place. You're looking for clients for that rate in the wrong place, okay? Don't charge what you need. So many people undercharge for their services, right? That's a value issue. They don't value what they bring to the table. So that's a money set or a mindset issue that you have to deal with. Um, a lot of people don't charge what they need. Again, coming down to value. They charge 25 when they really should be charging 35. Well, why would you undercharge and make yourself struggle? Because maybe that's what you think you deserve. That's a mindset thing as well. Don't compare yourself to others. You have no idea what their backstory is, and they're showing you what they want you to see, right? They're not really pulling the curtain back and showing you everything. So don't compare, you know, if you're a, a copywriter or you're um, an Infusionsoft VA, don't necessarily compare yourself to somebody else. You don't know what their style of living is. You don't know what they need to make. The only person that knows anything is you about yourself, about your needs, Right? And please, please don't ask others on social media what you should charge for a service. How do we know? How do we have any idea what to tell you? I don't know what services you're offering, what market you are in, or what market you're after. And most important, how much money do you need to earn? Because that right there is the key factor in everything you do when it comes to pricing. How much do you need? That's the number one question you should ask yourself. Okay? so. Don't haggle. Don't worry about if people can afford you or not. Make sure you're charging what you need, where you are right now. Don't compare yourself to others. I mean, you can look at what others are doing, but don't compare yourself to others and don't price based on that because you don't know their story. And don't ask others, well, what should I charge for this? Again, how do you know who the person is giving you advice? And two, they don't have enough information to answer that question. Only you have that information. And you can get advice, but when it comes to pricing, that's up to you. Um, another thing that I've seen is that some people will say, well, start with you know, $15 an hour. Just go ahead and start there at $15 an hour. And then as you hire new clients, keep increasing your rate. I love the idea of increasing your rates. But I don't agree with giving you a number to start with because how do I know how much you need to make? If someone was to say, well, Susan, you need to start at $30 an hour, I'd say, why? How do you know that I can live off $30 an hour? So you have to do the exercise to figure out what is your baseline. What is that number you must make in order to maintain your lifestyle right now? Then you can choose if you want to increase it, but that should be your minimum number. Nothing less than that. And only you can answer that by doing that exercise. Okay? Use your rates, not somebody else's. Because once again, how do you know? Hmm? So I know there's a lot of information in this video, but these are really common mistakes that people make, and I just want to spare you the same thing that I did and make these mistakes. At the end of the day, it's all about freedom and flexibility, having a business that allows you the lifestyle that you want. So you want to make sure you're charging accordingly. There are clients who will pay you for what you're doing. If you deliver a quality product, you won't have any problem finding clients. If you are having problem finding clients, then you need to look somewhere else, right? So this isn't a marketing um, video, this is about pricing, but that's something you need to think about as well. All right, so in the next video, which is video number four, we are actually going to talk about setting your rates. What do you need to do? Now that you have that, that baseline number and you know some of the mistakes you wanna avoid, how do you go forward with setting your rates? Or maybe you need to raise your rates because they're too low and you realize that after you've done that exercise in video number three. Right? So I do have um, just a quick checklist that you can download for this video, which is just kind of a summarization of what we talked about. Feel free to click on the link below to download that information for yourself. And I'd love to hear your questions or your comments. Please feel free to leave those below as well. And I will see you in video number four, all about setting your rates. See you soon. Bye.